Are you a new player starting Final Fantasy or a returning player that wants to learn how to clean up your UI? Well, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to go from this to this. Stay tuned to the end to get all my little tips in order to get the most use out of your UI. Hello everyone, my name is Stefan Ash and I have another practical Final Fantasy guide for you. If you get any value out of this video, then limit break three that subscribe button down below. Without further ado, let's jump into the video. As always, we're gonna jump in with a new character in order for you guys to get the full experience. You can just as easily hit the default button on the settings and the HUD layout in order to get back to the original form of everything if you wanna follow along. The first thing we're going to do is get rid of all these display names. I don't find having everyone's display names important, so we change these to when you target someone is when the display name will show. In order to do this, we'll go into character configuration, scroll down to display names, and we will adjust these here. You'll see display name presets, which we will change all of these to when targeted. Again, this is going to make yours, your companion, which is your mounts and your pets, only display when you target them. You can adjust these how you like, but we're trying to accomplish a clean UI look. Next, you'll tab over to others. Here again, we're gonna change all of these to only when targeted. Very rarely do you need to click on someone on PC. If you're on controller, you can just use the left and the right D-pad to scroll through the items or players in front of you. If you're on PC, you can simply just use your mouse. The only change here is I keep friends as always display in order to see them running around and always stop and say hi to them. The next thing we'll do is scroll over to the NPC tab, which you guessed it, are going to change to when targeted. This will get a lot of the muck that you see on your screen off when you're running around in the world. I do have my first tip here, and that's if, if you're a beginner player, then scroll down to the NPC click on show always. This will help you when you're starting out to differentiate between players and NPCs and help you find quests and start understanding the flows of the city. I also like to change the color here in order to see them more clearly as the name for the NPC is in a light green bluish by default and it can sometimes get lost on the screen. By changing this, I can now easily tell where the NPCs are with this dark green color that I've chosen. Let's take a look. We're already looking loads better when it comes to the general UI, but as you can see, we still have quite a bit of clunkiness with the actual elements of it, including the maps, the cross hotbar, and others. Before we jump into the settings, let's first adjust what you see when you first log in. You'll go to character configuration and UI settings. I'm going to leave a lot of this alone as I do not want to change or adjust anything that could potentially make you miss things in the game. We are simply going to scroll down and click off the recommendations and the play guide as these are super annoying to see these pop up every time we log into the game. Just make sure to hit apply whenever you're working in settings. Next, we're gonna tab over to the HUD. There are many things you can adjust here to your play style, but I will keep it to a minimum and allow you to explore once you get the base understanding out of the way. I'm simply going to turn off the inventory grid as I don't feel like it's necessary to see it. If you are new, your inventory will last for quite a while. I am thinking of doing a video on what items to keep and what you can get rid of. So if you want that kind of video, comment down below if you'd like to see that. Moving on, I'd like to adjust the number of duties displayed, which as you can see, the current quest is close to home right here to the right. I like to have only two, but we will adjust the size of it later in the HUD layout system everything else you can keep as of now. There is one last thing that we have to adjust for controller players only. If you're on mouse and keyboard, then this won't affect you, and that is the cross hotbar at the bottom. If you are a controller player, then I already have a controller setup guide that explains this cross hotbar and how to adjust it, which I will link above and below. I will not be going over it again here, but it is necessary to click some settings in order to adjust this in the HUD layout. Even for this video, it's important to understand the difference of cross hotbar and hotbar. Cross hotbar is only for controller. Hotbars are free floating and can be adjusted for keyboard and mouse users as a main way to access skills. Cross hotbar directly relates to the controller 
buttons. Moving on, you will go into character configuration and hotbar settings. On the display tab, you will simply click the hide unassigned slots. This will help tremendously later down the road as you fill out the hotbars with extra abilities, emotes, and more. You will tab over to the cross tab and scroll down to cross hotbar display settings. You will check all three of these settings, the always display cross hotbar, return to cross hotbar after secondary cross hotbar, the WXHB just means secondary cross hotbar that can be displayed once you click that first setting, as you can see here. And the last option, position secondary cross hotbar separately. After this, you'll go over to the custom tab and enable expanded hold controllers and enable secondary cross hotbar with simultaneous L trigger, right trigger, double tap, blah, 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 blah. Once enabled, you will click right underneath and enable direction and action buttons. This will allow your full secondary cross hotbar to show as you can see here. Very important for controller players and explained more in depth in my controller video. Okay, now that we have that all done, let's jump over to the HUD layout settings. This is the menu for HUD layout. You have basic which shows everything, system which will show you particular system elements, hotbars that will show you just the hotbars and cross hotbars, and duty. So the first thing we're going to do is adjust some of the basic elements here like map and server info. This is solely preference as it's dependent on how big your screen is and what makes you feel comfortable. I like to adjust these anywhere between 60 to 90% and utilize the entire screen corner to corner in order to keep the middle clear for the most important info. After moving the server and map info and making them smaller, I will adjust the duty element, which is the quest tab. I don't like to see my quest all the time and we have a separate menu for that the journal they're not important enough to make the center cut so i will shrink these down to about 60 percent and move them to the top very near my map this makes it not out of mind but just a little bit more out of sight the next thing we'll want to adjust is the alliance list one and two if you're a new player then you won't see these until about level 50 or so but it is good to adjust them now so you don't get into an alliance raid and then you're trying to adjust everything last minute and the raid starts. I move these to the very bottom right stacked on top of each other. These are not super important unless you're a healer or maybe a DPS that can raise in case one team of eight dies you can help res. Side note, don't worry about stacking things directly on top of each other as a lot of the time they don't show up all at once. The only ones I stack directly on top of each other is the action help and the item help again because if you're in the action and traits menu, you're not going to be in the inventory menu and vice versa. I will adjust my experience bar and my parameter health and MP bar to be a little smaller and center them to the middle of the screen. Some of you may know now watching my other videos that I'm a little OCD and I like to be very organized so I like to make sure everything is even and clean. For ease of this video I'm going to tap over to hotbars and clear all the hotbars to the left. You can do this by dragging and dropping. If you're on controller all you need to do is highlight and use the d-pad to move the element you want to move. Now for the cross hotbar, again specifically for controller. If you're on mouse and keyboard, then you would just have regular hotbars here instead of the cross hotbar. Because I'm a veteran player, I like to make this as tiny as possible as I know the skills and abilities already of the jobs. But if you are a beginner, you can keep this a little bigger for you to get used to it first. I will shrink and center the cross hotbar. You'll also see the separate secondary cross hotbars here. These will only show up if you adjust the settings that we did earlier in the cross hotbar section. If you don't see these, then double back and watch that again so then you can make sure these show up and you can adjust what you need. I like to keep these directly stacked on the cross hotbar as they correlate button wise so it makes it easier for future rotations when you get more skills. Again, all of that's covered in my controller guide. The progress bar is your action bar. So if you cast a spell, ability, or perform an action with a cast time or wait time, it will show up here. I like to keep this directly in the middle right below my hero for me to see all times. I shrink it a bit and put it just right above the cross hotbar. 
I will adjust my party list to be a little smaller and to the left. If you're a healer, sometimes they'll have it right next to the cross hotbar or your hotbars, which will allow you to visually see your party team's health easier. I don't particularly like that, so I keep it under my main scenario guide to the left. Let's talk about status info. This is your personal status information for enhancements or buffs, enfeeblements or debuffs, and other, which is free company buffs or long period buffs that last a long time, like Road to 70, or when Endwalker comes out, Road to 80. I like to keep these independent of each other, to which you can just click on the cog or the settings button in the menu when highlighted and change to display independently, so have a little bit more control when adjusting these. I like to put status info enhancements to the top middle, enfeeblements right next to that, and then other right between duty and enfeeblements. Okay, so let's look where we're at now. We're already looking a million times better on screen. There's a lot less junk and it's a more defined and clean UI, but we are not done yet. Let's jump back into HUD layout under settings and talk about the target bar. This bar is super important, so let's focus in. This is the representation of the target you are currently clicked on or an enemy that you're currently fighting. I like to break this bar up as certain elements are super important and should be enlarged. You can just click on the cog or settings and hit display target info independently. This will then split up to the HP bar, the progress bar, and the status bar. I like to keep the HP bar directly to the corner right of my character so I can focus in on the main enemy or target that I'm currently engaging with. Useful for bosses or if there's a ton of ads so you don't have to keep looking around or at the top of your screen. It's really important to keep this right in your line of eyesight so you don't have to keep looking away. The progress bar is super important now and later on so you might as well get used to it early on. This will show you what your target is casting. Later on, you'll have enemies, ads, or bosses cast certain abilities with cast times. As you play more, you'll start to recognize these abilities as you replay content, dungeons, or trials. Once you start learning the names of these abilities, you'll be able to understand which attack is coming next and be able to preemptively move in order to avoid it. This is crucial for later dungeons as they get harder as well as end game, so make sure to just start paying attention early on. You'll want to get that progress bar right smack near your character so you can always see what attacks are coming next and start learning the flows of battle. The last bar is the target info status, which will show all the target's debuffs and buffs. Also, side note, as you get later in the game, you may want your own enhancements more to the middle to start utilizing when party members give you buffs. A lot of jobs and classes have party-wide buffs that you'll want to capitalize on, so moving this closer to the middle keeps it in the field of view. My next tip is you can adjust any menu you're in with the right analog stick with your controller. You simply open a menu like inventory for say, and press down on the right analog stick and it will increase in size up to a point and then start over from the lowest size. This way you can easily adjust the size of the menus without having to go back to the HUD layout settings each time. There are also keybinds to adjust with your keyboard if you're playing on mouse and keyboard. My very last tip is that once you unlock job specific elements like for tank, tank stance, or healers, or DPS job specifics, you can adjust these also in HUD layout. So let's jump outside to see what our menu would have looked like if you had made no adjustments. Horrendous, I know. It's just clunky, a lot going on, makes it hard to enjoy the game, focus on enemies, and enjoy the scenery. Now let's see what it looks like now that we have adjusted everything. This right here is how you play an MMO. It's so nice and clean and keeps everything compact and you can actually enjoy the game. Again, if you've gotten any value out of this video, then don't forget to limit break three that subscribe button down below. Share this with your friends so they can have clean UIs too. If you have any further questions, you can comment down below or join my Discord and I'd be happy to explain anything further that you did not understand after watching the entirety of this video. If you want to watch more Final Fantasy videos, then you can click here.